We should never go to bed with thoughts that would dampen our spirit. That will keep our soul from overflowing with the goodness of the Lord. The Holy Spirit is our helper. He is very good at helping us dismiss harmful thoughts from our mind. And when we have salvation, the Holy Spirit takes the living water from our soul to cleanse our mind. We don't need to be worried, tormented, tortured in our minds. That is not the will of God. Mental torment for us Christians comes from the oppression of mental spirits coming against us, bringing us the battles of the mind. The Bible tells us what to do about the battles of the mind, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. We read that in 2 Corinthians 10.5. We can't have weak thoughts and still have the strength of the Lord in our mind. The Bible is filled with thoughts of strength to make us an overcomer. Those thoughts are ours to use. The devil is glad to see us thinking discouraging thoughts. He plays them over and over in our mind like a broken record as he tries to deceive us. We should take good thoughts to crowd out bad ones. Above all, take in the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Read that in Ephesians 6.16. The devil is shooting darts at our mind. The devil knows there is no need for him to come against the soul of anyone who is born again till he can convince the mind to commit willful sin. Then he can drop that sin into the soul. The shield of faith defends against these fiery darts, these evil faults of the devil. Use the shield of faith and the fiery darts bounce off harmlessly. If the devil can get us to think his evil thoughts, he will unload condemnation on us. He will say, we're guilty, you might as well do that forbidden thing that you've been thinking about. He is cunning. Don't let him plant his evil in your mind. Why let the devil unload any ideas on us? The devil is not our teacher or our guide. And when we took Jesus into our heart, we left the devil entirely and all his evil thoughts. We don't need to worry about our soul as long as we don't commit willful sin. Guard your mind, sift out the wrong thoughts. Be careful what we listen to because it will register in the mind. God wants us to think on things that will be a blessing. And when our mind is pure and clean, the Lord will move for us. God has sent the Holy Ghost to help us, to be our guide, our teacher, warning us to have none of the thoughts of the devil. Don't let people, no matter how much we love them, pour anything unholy into our mind. We won't drink from a cup filled with a rat poison. It will be even worse to let our mind be filled with the devil's poison. Stand up against those who would serve us from the devil's table. The cups are contaminated, ungodly and unclean. They may try to serve us contamination sooner or later, and they will say we are a fanatic when we don't listen. And if they become offended and go home, thank God for that. Wish them a nice farewell. Rivers of living water flowing into our soul, bubbling into life everlasting are offered to us from the Holy Spirit. And when the rivers of living water are inside our soul, it is easy for the Holy Spirit to flow into a clean, pure mind. We expect the cup we drink from to be clean. Why tolerate a cruddy leftover cup or a dirty mind? Let the Holy Spirit cleanse it with the blood of Jesus. Get out all the bugs and the flies. A roach we see swimming in our coffee cup has our undivided attention. We fish him out immediately. If someone told you that a roach in your coffee won't hurt you, if they say go ahead and drink the coffee, you would doubt his intelligence. But we should be more concerned about the roaches in our mind. They are much more dangerous. We should get rid of the mind roaches at once. If we allow those roaches to stay in our mind, we will sooner or later consume them. Let the good things stay in our mind and do away with the bad things. We have a well of living water in our soul that will pour into our mind, springing up into everlasting life. When living water cleans our mind, it is clean, and then the Holy Spirit fills it with the right things, the promises in the Word of God, the strength, encouragement, peace, love, joy and happiness that we need. He fills our mind with wisdom and knowledge and much more. Our soul is the reservoir for the things of God. If we put good thoughts there, thy word have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against thee. We read that in Psalm 119.11. Hide the water of life in our heart so we won't sin against God. Jesus let us know that he is the waters of everlasting life springing up. We need the water of life. 
what a desert our soul is without that living water. Every spirit-filled soul should produce the fruits of the spirit. We don't have living water in our soul, we have no life there, only death. Why can't we be rid of those things that are unpleasant when we have rivers of living water flowing from our soul? Why be a slave to the devil's faults? When I hold my coffee cup in my hand, I can dump out anything I don't want to drink. It's the same way with our mind. We can empty it, or we can keep any old kind of bug that drops into it. How can our troubled minds be renewed? By censuring it on the Lord in complete trust. Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind he stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. You read that in Isaiah 26, 3. In order to keep the mind stayed on the Lord, this means the Lord is our first consideration in all we do. We may have a soul full of peace, but we still have a storm ranging in our mind. Our mind can hold a lot of fear. Fear magnifies itself. A little fear can mushroom into a mountain. Have you ever been so terrified you thought you would die from fright? Fear can overtake us quickly, aided by a vivid imagination. We just know something is going to get us. Some of us can't go to sleep until we check under the bed to see if anything is hiding there. We can almost hear someone breathing from under there. We don't have a weapon, but we tiptoe out of bed and take a peep underneath. Have you ever thought what we would do if we looked under the bed and saw two eyes staring back at us from out of the dark? Would we ask what those eyes were doing there, or would we beat or passed out of there? Since our minds can hold so much fear, why can't it hold so much faith and love? Why can't it hold that much joy, peace and happiness? We don't have to be afraid. The Lord is our protection, our strength. He will take care of us. Psalm 23 tells us of the good things that made the psalmist's cup run over. God wants our cup to run over, run over daily. No matter what is happening around us, our cup can run over with the goodness and mercy of the Lord. We need to study the 93rd Psalm and hold out our cup and let his protection overflow in our mind. The mind that is kept clean holds a great anointing and is directed by God's love. The Holy Spirit flows the love of God in our soul directly into our mind. And when someone hurts us, don't carry that hurt into your mind. Dwelling on hurt is what the devil wants. Let the Holy Spirit flush it out at once. Replace the hurt with healing balm. Fill our cup with love and we will heal up. Hurtful things people may say about us won't matter. They slander Jesus too and they are still talking against him even today. Our mind is limited in how much it can take in during a given period. It can only handle one or two voices at the most. And if we turned on the radio and five people were all reporting the news at once, it would be very confusing. And some people try to deal with this kind of confusion in their minds, the chatter of people and of the devil. Will we listen to the voice of man, self, the devil or the Holy Spirit? Tune out other voices and tune in to the voice of the Lord. The devil is able to get our attention. The first thing he wants us to do is to turn loose of the word of God. The devil tries to destroy from our mind anything God would say to us in the very moment of need. If he can rob us of the word, we are in trouble. Jesus said that man cannot live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Some of us have the living water shut off in our souls, and we seem to be unwilling to pay the price to get God's utilities turned back on again. We know we should get the water turned back on again, but we don't want to pay. There is a price to pay to have this river of living water, not in dollars and cents, but in dedication and consecration to the Lord. Jesus paid the price for our salvation with his blood. We can't buy it with money. It's whosoever will let him come and take the water of life freely. In the living waters of the Spirit is everything we need to destroy all the works of the enemy, all his power and thoughts. It's eternal living water with eternal life and all the power in the blood of Jesus and all the greatness of the Godhead. Why should we let the devil defeat us? Why let him bring things to our mind that will weaken us? Anything that contaminates our mind is worse than poison. If you allow resentment in your mind, it will eventually drop into your soul and your salvation could be lost if you're not careful. We destroy the blood seal on our soul by willingly yielding to the wrong things. We can't play with sin in our mind and not become contaminated in our soul. Anything unclean that comes into our mind, brush it out straight away. Don't keep it. Don't toy with it. 
Sin is a monster. Sin will kill eternally if we don't get forgiveness. The Bible lists the 17 works of the flesh, works that contaminate us. Adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness, revelings and such like. That's Galatians 5, 19, 21. Never go to sleep without cleansing your mind first. Our last thought before we fall asleep should be to have the Holy Spirit cleanse our mind and let him flow whatever is needed from our soul into our mind while we sleep. But if we go to sleep with any contamination, anything that hinders the Holy Spirit, we will wake up in the same condition. How many times have we risen in the morning in the same condition we fell asleep in, with the same dread, the same spirit of defeat? If we had only let the Holy Spirit flush our mind of worry and fret, we would have awakened to a new day. Jesus delights in us if we are in total obedience. Jesus is looking upon us and declares that we are without spot or wrinkle or blemish, that we are fair. We belong to Jesus and Jesus is ours. No power can defeat us because we walk with Jesus. We find the shelter and the peace and the joy and the strength and the greatness that we need from Jesus. There is no lack. All things are made ready for us and this may be our final walk and our final battles with the enemy. We will know no defeat because Jesus is our victory and our faith. We know that Jesus loves us and that Jesus is our greatness in his final walk that we are talking. Right on into the gates of heaven and we are bringing to Jesus all the lost souls that he has helped us to win. Praise God. I say devotion written by Joe Walker and read by Gary Spicer. God bless you and keep you. Amen.